Russian priests sanctifying roads and police stations. Russia's Fund for National Welfare took a huge hit, and it's hidden from the public. Russian senators refuse to ditch their BMWs for Russian ladders. Russian parliament speaks Chinese now. Shocking news. All Russian women demanding their men to come back home from the front lines. Turns out they're manipulated by America's CIA. Russia's church is ready to forgive the traitors. And number of believers in Russia has decreased. And the biggest news of the week comes, well, it comes from all over Russia this week. The biggest news this week is all the news this week. And it looks like, uh, well, things aren't looking good. Is that the biggest news? You be the judge. Welcome to another crazy Friday Russian news update. Howdy, howdy, friends. If you're here for the first time, my name is Konstantin, and welcome to Inside Russia. You know, it's explained by the unusual Russian. Every Friday, I give you crazy news updates straight out of the grandiose mad circus that Russia has become. But first things first. Please remember that there's no such absurdity that could not be realized in Russia these days. The first news comes from the very heart of Russia, from Western Siberia, from the land of Russia's oil and gas. In the town of Khantemansysk, um, in its um, a cute little town, probably the richest town in the world due to its oil reserves, the authorities started noticing that the number of fatal accidents has increased sharply, and I'm talking about the roads. And that is not good. And the authorities have decided to fix that. Well, what's the big deal, you ask? Authorities make roads safer in towns all over the world every single day. Where's the news? But Khantemansysk has taken a completely different approach to making roads safer. Check this out. The authorities of Khantemansysk decided to bring Russian Eastern Orthodox Church to sanctify roads in the attempt to reduce the number of fatal accidents. Yep, that's an Orthodox priest performing a ceremony. Sanctifying roads. Well, he's uh, trying real hard. He's doing a very good job, as far as I understand. He's protected by the police. And this is the police station. Now, <laughs> strange. I thought you decrease the number of fatal accidents on the roads by doing these three things. Increasing driver's skills and decreasing drunk driving. Making cars safer to drive. You know, making sure that the brakes and steering wheels work properly. Things like that. And by improving the roads. Widening them. Making them uh, more lit. Fixing potholes, you know cleaning up snow, things like that. But hey, what do I know? You live, you learn. An orthodox priest turns out to be enough to decrease a number of fatal accidents in Khantemansysk. The priest sanctified the local police station as well. I guess in exchange for protection while he was sanctifying the road. Uh, if not, then it's not clear why. Oh, I know. <laughs> he sanctified the police station, perhaps to decrease the number of fatal accidents among suspects of political opposition when they are arrested and interrogated. Well, in this case, I have an important suggestion to Russian authorities. Um, there are anywhere from three to five accidents happen in the air in Russia, with passenger planes nowadays daily, three to five daily. Just think about these numbers, three to five daily. 
And this is what I'm going to do the stream tomorrow. Uh, actually, a video tomorrow. Please keep on tuning in. I will describe and explain what has happened to Russian aviation industry. All you need to do is three to five accidents happen in the air with passenger jets daily. So why don't you install Russian Orthodox priests in their full uniform with the holy water at the airports? That'd be sanctifying airplanes before they take off. I mean, it's a, if it's a new way of preventing fatal accidents to happen, use it on the planes. How about that? The next news comes from Russia's Ministry of Finance. You know, <laughs> one of the reasons why Russian economy hasn't collapsed yet is a savings account that Russia has. And it's called the Fund of, um, the Fund of National Welfare. And extra spendings, such as financing the war with Ukraine, you know, things like that, they have been coming out of this foundation, out of the savings account. Um, well, <laughs> the Ministry of Finance just reported that in the last day of 2023, at 29th, I think the last working day of 2023, it sold 573 million euro, half billion, um, 232 metric ton of gold, and 114 billion Chinese yuans to finance Russia's budget deficit. They did that in secrecy, and um, only now, three weeks later, they tell the taxpayers that they did it. They spent the taxpayers' money to finance the war. And it's now they say it um, in a very casual way, like it's not a big deal. Just a couple news reports here and there, just to say, hey, it was not a secret. We uh, talked about it in that and that newspaper. You know, that's it. So no one really reads them. I do. So um, they're acting as, as if it's not a big deal. <laughs> Folks, imagine the situation. Husband comes back home from work tells his wife how things went at work and casually mentions, Honey, by the way, remember we have that savings account? <laughs> what do you mean if I remember? That's our retirement money. Well, before Christmas, I paid off our credit card debt with half of our savings account. I, I meant to tell you all along, you know, but that, uh, you know, it's just, I'm telling you now. Um, what? We don't have any credit card debt. What are you talking about? Well, I made some charges that last year. I didn't tell you about, and I just paid them off. But, but, but that's our retirement money. We've been saving it for 20 years. What are we going to do now? Honey, I, I don't know. What's for dinner tonight? <laughs> and that's exactly what happened in Russia. Half of National Welfare Fund is gone. All funds in European euro currency are gone. All funds in American currency dollars are gone. That's very liquid assets. You can sell them at any time, you know. What's left right now is 358 metric tons of gold, which is not very liquid because, Rus because Russian gold is under sanctions, right? You can't sell Russian gold easily, just like a snap of a finger. And 227 billion Chinese yuans still remaining. In other words, at this point, Russia has spent most of its savings. The economic tsunami isn't coming any longer. It's already in Russia. Water is up to the throats of Russian tax taxpayers. But for some miraculous reasons, the propaganda has successfully averted uh, taxpayers' attention from these economic problems. But let me tell you, boy, it's not looking good. The next news comes from Russian parliament. Oh, a bunch of good guys, let me tell you. This Russian parliament, folks, ew. As all, we all know by now, the leadership of the country, you know, the comrades up there, they made a very patriotic decision to replace all foreign-made cars uh, that Russian senators use with Ladas, manufactured in Russia. Yeah, this wonderful cars. 33 Lada Vesta cars were purchased for the parliamentarians, for the senators, this past year. 
I mean, uh, that makes perfect sense, right? There's war going on. Germany supplies Leopard tanks to the Ukrainian army. The country is surrounded by the enemies. It makes sense to become patriotic finally and show your support to the local auto industry by ditching that German junk manufactured in Bavaria, you know, no good anyway, and switching to brand new spanking Lada Vesta. Oh, those Ladas, you know. What? What? Those lot of Vestas are not Russian? What the heck? That's a half breed between Nissan Almeida 96 and Renault Logan 99? Huh? Are you sure about that? Half and half? 30 year old models? You mean the uh, front is from Almeida and the back is from Logan? What? What? Oh, doesn't know anything. Don't listen to that. Good folks, don't listen to that. The Russian technology, Lada Vesta. Russia's pride and joy. Oh, there's a, a little problem. It's not about the cars. It's about the senators. Good Russian senators are not in a hurry to switch their cars. They keep on riding in their BMWs Model 7. And they categorically refuse the new, to use the new Lada Vestas. Folks, it's all you need to know of double-faced Russian senators. Case closed. The next news also comes from Russian parliament. This news is so crazy that I don't even know how to comment it, really. Um, I shouldn't. I, I, I shouldn't. I'll simply show it to you. Check this out. This is the website of the Russian parliament. All is well. All is normal. I mean, it's okay that Russian parliament has a website. Uh, the, it's there to inform uh, uh, all the taxpayers and the voters of all the decisions, laws, new laws, amendments, etc. The Russian parliament informs the Russian citizens. And again, this is perfectly normal. I don't even mind my money to be spent on creating and maintaining that website. Perfectly normal. More normal. But on December 26th of the last year, a couple weeks ago, the Russian parliament translated its website into Chinese language. <laughs> Check this out. That's how the Chinese version of Russian parliament's website looks like. Take a very good look. Now, why in the world would they do that? Why would they inform the Chinese citizens of the activities of the Russian parliament? <laughs> Folks, who do they really work for? Frankly, I don't know what to say. I've seen a lot of weird stuff happened last year. But this is just gets weirder and weirder. I don't know what to say. You know, I'm asking you to let me know what you think about Russian parliament speaking Chinese. Please write down in the comments below, because I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like to hear your opinion. And I, let me tell you, boy, it's not looking good. The next news um, concerns me. Yes, concerns me, Constantine, directly, personally. I am offered forgiveness, but there is a condition. I must repent and return to Russia. Yes, that's right. The head of Russia's Eastern Orthodox Church, Kirill, gave a Christmas interview to Russia One TV channel, the propaganda at its best. He called for repentance from Russian citizens who left the country after the start of the war with Ukraine. He said that among those who left, there are some decent people 
who could have made a mistake or sought more comfortable living conditions. Yeah, a mistake. Kirill said that if they return with understanding their mistakes and with sense of repentance, the motherland will not reject them. He also stressed that the church will forgive the lost souls, but uh, it will not help with criminal cases for those who come back to the motherland. Now, I think it's pretty fair. The church does its part, and the KGB does its part. Good news. Good news. I, you know, what can I say? Tomorrow, I'll go to the breakfast club meeting, uh, to Tashkent Breakfast Club. There will be around 40 of us, you know, the sinners. Those who, according to Kirill, made a mistake running away from the war, from the political oppression, from the support, not supporting Putin, on Saturdays, uh, it's usually around 40 people have breakfast. So it's a big day because it's a day off. And I picture myself coming in tomorrow morning and seeing this bunch of people, my friends, you know, and saying out loud, Repent, sinners! Russian church is ready to forgive you. You can go back now to your motherland if you repent. Folks, I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow at the Tashkent Breakfast Club. Please stay tuned for that. A very unusual news came out of Russian federal police. Interesting. The Ministry of Internal Affairs, that's how the federal police is called in Russia, released the statistics of church attendance during Orthodox Christmas. There are actually two news within this one news. The first news is that Russian federal police gathers such statistics, which really means that they monitor everyone who goes to church for Orthodox Christmas and probably for other services as well. Now, even if I learn that the police not only monitors the churchgoers, but also performs face recognitions and gathers information on regular citizens online, now that would not surprise me. And the second news of, uh, in this news is that this year, church attendance during Orthodox Christmas decreased and the number of believers in the country decreased. You know, statistics is a cruel thing. According to Russian Federal Police, and this is the data, that's official data, according to Irina Volchik, the spokesperson for the Federal Police, in 2024, around 1.4 million people visited the churches, which is lower than pre-war years. In 2020, about 2.3 million people attended. In 2019, more than 2.6 million people attended. In 2018, more than 2.5 million people attended, and so forth. Um, how many believers do communions uh, and attend the churches is a key indicator of faith and church membership. Now, do you find that there's something wrong? <sighs> that something is broken? The country is surrounded by Anglo-Saxons, the evil satanic Westerners. They want to destroy Russian sovereignty. In these dark times, the Russians are supposed to unite behind the Tsar, behind the church. The Russian world, the values, I made the entire stream about that yesterday, go and check it out. They must unite behind the church, the pillar of the Russian world, right? And they are uniting, they are praying, they're going to church, you know, the church membership is surging. Well, at least that's what propaganda is telling us. And then somehow the federal police comes out and slips, accidentally releases the truth. Don't you love what that happens? Thank you, the police. Much appreciated information this time, and I mean it. Anyway, something's very strange here. Am I the only one noticing this informational dissonance? It sure seems so to me. No one else is noticing this information. No one else compares it in doing analysis. 
Folks, please me know, let me know in the comments that I am sane, that I'm not crazy. Speaking of comments, you know, that's the only way you can just send me the information. Sometimes I, I think I'm alone. Sometimes I think, what the heck? Why aren't Russians seeing this? Why aren't they looking? Why aren't they paying attention? Ah. Oh. Anyway. Um, speaking of comments, you know, if you like in today's news update, please help me spread it by making reposts of this in your social media accounts. I ask you that every time. But um, I also noticed that when you comment, it's like magic for YouTube. So please have a comment. Make a comment. Leave a comment. And if you have nothing to say, just leave a couple lines of encouragement. I'd love to read that. You know, it's very pleasant and it helps the channel a great deal. Thank you so very much. The next news comes from one of Russia's senators, a very important one, the chairman of Parliament's Defense Committee. Um, his name is, well, you've seen them on my channel quite a bit, Kartopolov. His name is Andrei Kartopolov, and he is a big newsmaker. He, this time, he said that the mobilized Russian men uh, should not be allowed to go home after a year of service. And also, according to the chairman, those Russians who talk about rotation, who call for the mobilized to go home, they are nothing but agents working for Tsipso, that's Ukrainian Information Intelligence, and the agents of American CIA. I knew that. Oh, I, he made it so clear. I had a feeling. I knew that the mothers and the wives and the daughters of the mobilized men, those who stand up and ask and demand and beg for their husbands to come back home, you know, that they go stage public meetings, they make splashes. I knew that there's something wrong. I knew that the, now it's all clear. They get paid by the CIA. That's what the good senator claimed. Now I understand. Makes sense. The CIA and Tsipso, whoever they are, I've you know never heard of Tsipso, but then the senator knows better. They knocked on the door of every single woman demanding her loved one to come back. And the rumors have it there are around 100,000 women are organized into groups demanding the men to come back. So the CIA knocked on 100,000 doors in Russia, made 100,000 telephone calls. The CIA sent 100,000 emails convicting, uh, convincing Russian women to act using their men as excuse to start making waves, to start, you know, help the CIA to break Russian sovereignty. And their men, just an excuse, of course. Because according to the senator, they must stay, they must not rotate, they must not come back until they're gone. Amazing. Let me tell you, the CIA is a mighty powerful force that can so easily recruit old women babushkas, you know, and that's in front of KGB's nose on the KGB's land, and the KGB doesn't know what's going on in Russia? Well, there are questions to KGB for that, you know. Who and I, you thought that they do it for the love of their sons and husbands? Uh, oh, come on. Now we know the truth. They're doing it in exchange for material things. And Senator Kartapolov, now we know how low you have fallen. And boy, it's not looking good for the country. The next news is it's actually very. Uh, very, very, very sad. Extremely sad and bad news. It came from uh, His Excellency himself, the Dark Lord Darth Vader. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, gee, where's the button? Wrong button. Uh, here. I'm sorry about that. From Vladimir Putin. He's running for Russian presidency. You know that? Incumbent, you know. I quote Vladimir Putin. That's bad. Uh, cringing. I'm already an adult. Vzrosly chilovik. 
Although I feel uh, I am, you know, already adult and взрослый человек, I, uh, regardless, I feel the strength and energy to work, to solve the tasks the country is facing. I unquote. Who? So he has energy. He has strength. Boy, it's not looking good. The next news comes from well, from the same person in the previous news, from the adult full of strength and energy to solve the problems of a certain country. Turns out that on January 10th, that person met with the Minister of Finance of Russian Federation, Anton Siluanov. Ah... <sighs> He said, I quote, Finance Minister Antov, Anton Siluanov had just reported me on the financial situation and the country's budget system is feeling confident and actively developing. I end quote. Russia's budget system feeling confident? Actively developing? Dude, your minister of finance, this very man that just was reporting you, just sold nearly all Russian taxpayer savings, the Fund of National Welfare, two weeks ago, in secret, not telling to the taxpayers, to people, sold to patch up big holes in the Russian budget. And you call in this feeling confident and actively developing? My gosh, the only way I can explain what, what's going on is they are simply trolling the Russians. They make bets on how far they can push it. That's the only explanation I can find. Please help me out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to know because I don't have any other explanation. They're making bets. And they're seeing how much they can get away with it. Uh, no wonder they're so afraid of uh, and shut down anyone who's not part of their system, like mother of three, an attorney, Yekaterina Donsova. For Russia, it's not looking good at all. Hey, by the way, if at this point you're asking yourself, how can I help this channel? It's pretty easy. The best way is to hit the like button right now. To buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com or become channel's patron at patreon.com. Either way is fantastic and much appreciated. Thank you so much. The links are down below. Let me take a sip of this wonderful English breakfast tea. The next news is about economy. Well, just a little bit about the economy this time. Just another price increase record. No, not eggs this time. You know, eggs will be the next time. <laughs> Cucumbers. The price record was broken at a regular food store in Moscow in Atradnaya district. The store is called Spar. Used to be a foreign-owned chain from Europe, a um, chain of stores, food stores. Now it belongs to Russians. Spar stores are regular, um, you know, regular Russians go and shop there. They aren't the cheapest ones around, but they're also not the most expensive. In the middle of a range, so to speak. Regular Russians go there and do grocery shopping. Now, check this out. Right here. In this spa store, currently cucumbers were for sale on sale for 699 rubles per kilo. That is $7.81, $7.81 per kilo, or $3.90 per pound. These cucumbers were not imported. They came from Dagestan, a Russian province. They're locally grown. As far as I know, it's the price record in the European part of Russia, including Moscow. Please note, 
I'm not saying it's the only cucumbers you can find. I'm not saying the shortage of cucumbers. There's a choice. And you most likely can find cheaper cukes, you know, right at that store of lower grade. But if you want the best, this is it for sale. Almost eight bucks per kilo. Just to give you a perspective, my mother is retired. She receives monthly pension from the government. She gets um, 11,500 rubles every single month. 7,500 out of that amount comes out to cover the utilities. Electricity, heat, hot water, trash removal, things like that. So she's left with about 4,000 rubles to spend on everything, including food. For that amount, she can buy a little under 6 kilos or 11.5 pounds of cucumbers at that price. 6 kilos equals 11.5 pounds of cukes for the entire month to eat and nothing else. This example of purchasing power of a regular retired person my mom worked all her life and she was she had high education and uh, she was uh, a chief accountant of large companies for as long as i can remember and that's how she you know the government is paying her for all her life working hard um and that's a pretty darn good explanation of country's financial situation how country's budget system is feeling confident and actively developing. We are seeing all that confidence and active development quite well. And boy, it's not looking good. On the other hand, you know, let me finish the stream with the financial news so you understand more how Russia is doing. Country's well-being, news medley kind of. Russians, uh, Russia's natural gas exports have collapsed to 1985 levels. By the end of 2023, Gazprom sold about 69 billion cubic meters of gas for export, the minimum since 1985. Compared to 2022, the volume of the exports decreased by 33%, by third. And if we compare it to pre-war levels, the level, the volume has decreased by 300%. Exports to Europe and elsewhere fell to 28 billion cubic meters. The level um, of the exports that they were doing in the second half of the 70s. And boy, it's not looking good. Turkish banks have started blocking payments from Russia starting January 1st of this year. Trade payments have been stopped, including those made in national currencies, lira and rubles, not just in dollars. This blocking has affected various industries, various companies, including chemical companies, manufacturers of auto parts, clothing, footwear, and, of course, eggs exporters. This blocking followed shortly after a visit by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, and U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally uh, Adaimo to Turkey. They explained what America is going to do to Turkish banks who do business with Russia, and uh, Turkish banks stopped doing business with Russia immediately. And that's a huge blow for the trade between Russia and Turkey. And there are two major places where Russia is getting the goods right now from one is China, and another one is Turkey. So that's a huge blow. And I'm telling you, that's not looking good. The Chinese car manufacturer named FAW4, China's oldest and second largest automaker, the 79th largest company in the world, has stopped manufacturing cars for Ottawa's, citing the fact that they do not want to do business with Ottawa's any longer in order not to be a subject of the secondary sanctions against Russia from American banks. Again, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had a little talk with the Chinese and they listened. Ah, uh, boy, it's not looking good. The Chinese banks will stop doing business with the clients from Russia due to sanctions. 
Two banks stopped immediately and others are following. China's state-owned banks are tightening restrictions on financing Russian clients after the United States, well, Secretary Blinken doing a little talk again, after the United States promised to impose secondary sanctions against the bank that helped Russia in the war against Ukraine. Um, at least two Chinese banks uh, have started closing their businesses in Russia. They intend to severe ties with all clients uh, from the sanctions list and stop providing financial services to the Russian military sector. Uh, that's pretty much to everyone. Other Chinese banks will follow the suit very soon. The restrictions will also affect non-Russian customers doing businesses in uh, business and just uh, not in the Russian Federation or supplying critical goods to Russia through third countries. And that, my friends, is called the secondary sanctions. Uh, quite some time ago, about a year ago, I made a dedicated stream to secondary sanctions. And I named it, the secondary sanctions are Russia's biggest threat, killing Russia. Well, you know, welcome to <laughs> 2024. And I'm telling you, it's not looking good. India's imports of Russian oil in December fell to the lowest level since January 2023. It was reported that decrease was due to problems with payment. As the USA tightened its control over the compliance with the sanctions, including price ceiling of $60 per barrel for Russian oil. Hello, Secretary Blinken again. <laughs> Thanks for your talk. Goodbye, India as Russian oil importer. And I'm telling you, boy, it's not looking good whatsoever. The minister uh, and, well, <laughs> not the minister. The master. Too much talking, too little tea. <laughs> the master of crazy statements made another statement. I quote, Russian economy is stable. Inflation has increased. But everything is under control despite that. No shit, genius. Oh, in general, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, 2024, right from the start, is not looking good for Russia. Where's my popcorn? Right here, and this is the entire year supply. I'm watching closely, and I'm having my popcorn. And this is it for the news update today. Thank you so much. I suggest now you check out another video made documenting how Russia is freezing this winter. Thank you so very much.